Hello, in this video we're going to go over how to install the DRO on our lathe and mill and also the tack sensor. We're going to start off with the tack sensor. Uh, for starts it's a lot easier to put this stuff on if you take the entire headstock and motor control off of your machine. Okay, then you can move it around and work on it in a way that's easy for you to work on. Uh, when you get your DRO, it's got a little bag that's got all the tack sensor equipment in it. This is our tack sensor with the phone line, uh, one zip tie, one very small screw, so don't lose the screw. Probably wise to keep it in the bag until you need it. And this is the actual uh, readout paper that goes on the back of the pulley. And you can look at the back of the pulley. On your machine, it's bound to be dirty. Okay, so you want to clean it off first so that the adhesive on here adheres to it. Uh, what we recommend is Windex from my Windex mail, thank you. Uh, and if you just spray a little bit on, it doesn't take much. Wipe it off. All the way around. Okay. And then as a tip in the instructions, it actually tells you to use the Windex to help this guy adhere to it. So again, what I'll do is I'll take this guy off. Set in there. Okay, the light spray it should be good. We're going to take our decal. Place it over. down onto the pulley. Okay, and then we'll go from the center out and get rid of all the bubbles and get this guy set down nice and smooth all the way around. Okay, the Windex will evaporate out of it and you'll be left with a sticker that's stuck on good. So that looks good right there. Okay, the next part of it is to mount the actual tack sensor. Okay, and so we've got our, our telephone cable, which goes into the DRO box. Okay. And if you unflex this a little bit so it's not all coiled, it works a little bit easier. Okay, what you're going to do now is get this guy set up where you actually want it to read out. Okay. And it has a picture in the instructions that show you where it should be. You don't want it all the way into the middle. It actually has to be in the mid zone, right about here. Actually, if you actually put it up against the surface of the, the motor cover, the belt cover, right there is pretty much the middle of the, the field between the, the inside and the outside diameter of the of the black and white that you're going to read. So I would just stick it there. Okay. Then we'll mark it and drill it. Okay. Mark it. Got a Sharpie. Okay, I'm at position right there. Just going to mark it with a Sharpie. Okay, and I've got a little dot there. Okay, then it says to use a 1 inch drill. Okay. If you have a cordless drill, use it. If not, you can take the chuck out of your lather mill and just hand drill it with this. You're drilling into plastic, it's not metal. It doesn't take any great amount of effort here. And that way you don't drill all the way through and into your pulley. Okay, I got through. It didn't take long at all. Okay, so I've got my hole right there. I'm going to get my screw. If you have a jeweler screwdriver, that works best. And this is a Phillips head. 
Okay, to mount the tack sensor, I've got a piece of wood that I'm going to be using in the next part of the video. I'm just going to use that as a third hand. Steady it here for me. Okay. And then I can get my screw in here. It's easier to put the screw into the hole to begin with. And then put this whole unit. Okay, I'm threading it in right now. This is a self-threading screw and you are going into plastic. You just want to have it tight enough to hold the tachometer, the tack sensor rather, in place. If you over tighten, you will strip the threads out. So once it's in like so, Okay, again, jeweler screwdriver, basically the tension you can put on with two fingers, that's tight enough, and that guy's not going anywhere. Okay, get our wood piece in here. Okay, before you set it up and spin it at 2800 RPM, uh, recommend that you actually spin it by hand and make sure there's no interference. You've got about between, about say 80 thousandths clearance between the bottom of the sensor and the actual label that it's reading right here. So everything clears right there, so that's good. Set this down again. Okay, and then in order to keep this from getting in the way, what they recommend, what we recommend, is that you bring it under here and then just zip tie it onto your power cord. So pull it taut out of the way, zip tie it in place. And that takes care of your tack sensor. Okay, now we're going to do the DRO install for the X and Z axis on the lathe. This is almost identical to what the install will be on the X and Y axis on your mill. On this machine, this lathe, we have adjustable hand wheels. Okay, we're going to do the Z axis DRO now. When you do this, it's wise to do the z-axis before you do the x-axis because there's a lot more uh, disassemble and assembly work to be done on the lathe than there is when you do the x-axis. So do the z-axis first. First thing you want to do is get your tailstock up a little bit out of the way so you have access to this screw right here. Okay. Next thing you want to do is break your collar free so that your collar on this guy and turn and you're going to turn your hand wheel until the set screw lines up with it and the set screw lines up okay and we're going to put this guy in here break it free give it a couple turns actually about a turn and a half should do it okay we'll go a couple turns okay and that hand wheel is open up Okay, now what we're going to do is take the headstock off. We're going to have to replace the thrust collar. screws out of the bottom. Okay, if you notice on the bottom, this one is the headstock in. Okay, we have one screw in the headstock in. Okay, the screw at the tailstock in is a screw along with a washer, sometimes two, depending on how much was machined off of the base. Okay, make sure that the one with the washer goes back in the tailstock, the one without goes back in the headstock. And okay, we take the base off. So, okay. Now we're going to take this screw the rest of the way out and replace 
in each group for us. Area two. Okay, new screw thrust, and this has a washer on the back of it. This washer goes against the shoulder on your lead screw, and when you put this all back together, you are sandwiching this thrust collar between this washer, the shoulder on the lead screw, and the hand wheel. This washer has to be there, so if you take it off and it's stuck to your thrust collar, and make sure it gets put back on or you're going to have problems with your assembly and your machine will wear out prematurely also. Okay, put this guy on here. Put our thrust collar on here. Okay. Alright. Okay. And put the base back on. set there for right now. Okay, what I'm going to do first is align my hole on this side for my top screw. My little 82. Okay, and that gets my thrust collar locked into place on the bed. Okay, and again, snug is good. Right there, that's good. Okay, and I'm going to turn it over. Screws back in, the tailstock in, and the headstock in. Again, the one with the tailstock has a washer on it, and there's a slot. The one for the headstock has a, a single hole and does not need a washer. Okay, this guy here is loose, okay. and we'll give ourselves a little bit of room here so we can adjust this up and down so that we can line up the hole for this one. Right, snug on that one, and then we finish tightening this one, since this is the adjustable end. Snug is good. Okay. Okay. Now, in order to get all the mechanical backlash out of my lead screw. What we're going to do is put the headstock back on. Okay. Uh, the key is ground on two sides. The ground sides are what goes into the, the keyway here. Okay, some of these are a little tighter than others. If you have a tighter fit, then that means your machine's going to lock in solid and square. If it is tight, just give it a little bit of tap. If you got one of these, tap it down. And we're going to lock the headstock in place. And when you lock your headstock down, there should be no light visible where the ground part of the bed and the headstock meet, which there isn't on that one. Okay, what I'm going to do right now is okay, turn this guy clockwise. Okay, if I turn it counterclockwise, you can see it's going into the it's going into my machine. It's feeding through. I want to go clockwise so that that washer that I just showed you and that shoulder is now pressed up against the end of this thrust collar. Okay, and I want to have a nice fresh area to put my new set screw in. So again, I put this guy on. Okay. And for right now, we're just going to go just very gently. Just, just snug here. That's just snug. Okay, what I want to do now in order to get rid of the backlash, the mechanical backlash in this assembly, is I'm going to get a piece of wood and I'm going to put the piece of wood between the cross slide and the headstock. Okay, and I'm going to bring this in and I'm just going to tighten it down snug like so. Okay, and this in effect has now pushed the shoulder of the lead screw nice and hard against the shoulder, the shoulder of the thrust collar. Okay, so now I'm going to turn this guy just a little bit and I'm going to squeeze him in place like so and then lock this down. 
And now when I bring it back out, again I have maybe two thousandths, that one half two thousandths worth, worth of play. Okay. I should be able to get this a little bit nice, a little bit nicer than that. So a little bit more. Take this guy off of here. area on the screw. Tighten it up a little bit more. Okay, now I'm backing it out. Okay, I've got very little backlash right now. First time I had, had about two lines, I'm probably around a thousand, about a thousand and a half right now, which is about as good as it can possibly get without locking up. Okay, so that guy's looking good and feeling good. All right, again, we go with the housing. You've got a fat side, a thick side, and a thin side. The thick side goes towards the thrust collar and feeds into the thrust collar. Okay, so that guy's good right there. And same with this one. The th thick side goes towards the thrust collar. So thick side. Towards the thrust collar. These guys in there. Okay, I'm going to turn it upside down to get my screws started in it. Okay, and then we'll tighten them all down. Okay. All snug. Okay, and I'm going to turn it sideways. I'm going to turn it back down. Okay. On some of the older machines, you can see there's a gap between the housing and the base. Okay. On this model lathe, these these castings are not machined. If for some reason this base sticks out further than the end and it interferes with your um, with your housing here, then what we suggest is you put your housing sideways like this and use this gap right here. If this forms a sight line where, where both the bottom and the top meet, you've got a visible line and use that as your zero line and just lock it in solid here sideways. This guy doesn't interfere at all. So again, we've got our zero mark right there. Get it so it's lined up nice straight. Okay, and then we're just going to flip this guy over and tighten these guys down. turning this and this is not turning at all even if I try to turn the body by hand it's not turning again if this turn the first thing you want to do is sand off a little bit off of your top piece and see if it sandwiches it down tight enough if that doesn't work then a little drop of uh, super glue in the groove will work just fine on this machine this lathe we have adjustable hand wheels for the adjustable hand wheels you loosen the lock on the for the collar so the collar will turn freely okay and then you have it so that the holes up facing up and you turn the hand wheel until the set screw shows right there okay and before we get going on the, on the cross slide here I'm going to lock this in place okay what you want to do is screw your hand wheel all the way in as close to the saddle as you can get so right there is up against the saddle. I'm going to go about two revolutions back. Again, I'm going to put the hole up facing up this way. And I'm going to turn it until the little set screw hole lines up right there. Okay. Then I'm going to take a 330 seconds. Put it in here. That's not going to do it. And break the set screw loose. This is what's holding my hand wheel on. 
Okay. Once that's loose, give it about another turn. Okay, my hand wheel comes up. Okay, if you have a small metal shim washer in here, keep it and reuse it when you put the DRO on. If you don't have a shim washer, you don't have one. It's uh, not a necessary part of the build. Some have, some don't. Okay, the next thing I want to do is take off the thrust collar. Okay, and the thrust collar has one screw right here. Okay, same Allen wrench, 330 seconds. And all I'm going to do is break this free right here. And that allows my thrust collar to come off. Okay. I'm going to use the same screw to mount the next thrust collar on. So that's my original thrust collar. Okay, in the bag for the DRO kit, you have for the lathe, you have one thrust collar for the cross slide, and you have one thrust collar for the Z axis, and a multitude of little screws. Okay, so what I'm going to do right now, you'll notice that there is a groove on the thrust collar. That is what the actual housing clips into. One side's got the counter bore, one side does not. Counter bore on the outside. Put the thrust collar in there. Find your, your hole. Okay. And tighten this guy up. Okay, now the reason I have it all the way in close to the saddle is if I had the screw all the way out here, okay, there's a tendency for the screw to flex left, right, up, or down, the further it gets away from the, the pivot point, which is the saddle, okay? So if I align my thrust collar with the screw all the way out here, there's a good chance that the alignment's not going to be perfect, okay? And when it's all the way out here, it won't matter, but as you draw the cross slide in close to the saddle, that alignment, that misalignment becomes worse and worse, and you start to get a binding action on your screw, okay? If you align it right up here close to the saddle, then this alignment is dead on, okay, and it's not going to be a, a factor when you move away. It's only a factor when you get in close. So that guy's aligned right there. Give it a little bit of a wiggle. That looks good. Okay, and we'll lock it down. Okay, the next thing, if you can see this on the screw right here, you can see where it's got an indent from the first set screw from when this hand was put on the first time. When you put your new put your new hand wheel on in your DRO, you want to put the set screw on a fresh part of the of the lead screw. Okay, so right now I turned it in, and as you can see, it gets shorter. This should be threaded all the way out as far as possible, because what you're going to do is sandwich the hand wheel. You're going to sandwich the thrust collar between the, the back shoulder of this adapter piece and your hand wheel, and that's what's going to get rid of your mechanical backlash. We removed the hand wheel. We've got our cross slide up close to the lathe saddle. Okay, and we have our DRO hand wheels. Okay, you'll notice on the DRO hand wheels, the way the numbers are lasered on them, one is upside down and one is right side up, and it all depends on what axis you put it on. Okay, if I want to have it on the X axis, then I want to have the numbers so I can read them so they're not upside down. So this would be our X axis hand wheel. To get a little bit of force on the shoulder, I'm going to back this guy out a little bit. Now I know that the shoulder of this part is pushed up against the back side of the thrust collar. Also, I'm going to turn it a little bit so that I have a fresh area on the screw to put my new set screw into. If you don't do that, it has a tendency of following the original set screw, which may make it tighter or looser than it should be. Okay. We unscrew the set screw a little bit to make sure it doesn't interfere with our assembly. Put the hand wheel on with the set screw facing up. Push it all the way on. Okay, now the force that you exert on here is going to sandwich the, the thrust collar between the hand wheel and the shoulder on the screw adapter. Okay, so you want to put force on there. Okay, I would generally pull it back in towards me. And then I'm going to tighten the set screw down. Okay, tighten that. Okay, now I'm going to turn it. Okay, you're going to have one to two lines, two thousands or less in backlash. You have to have some backlash or the entire assembly just locks up solid. So you're always going to have some. The less you can have, the less you have, the better. Okay. 
All right, so that guy's pretty much set right there. I got about two. And uh, if you look at the DRO housing, one side of it is thin, just has the lip on it. The other side has a lip on it, but it's got a thicker section on either side right here. The thicker side of the housing goes towards the thrust collar, and this lip right here is going to lock right into the groove on the DRO hand wheel. So we'll bring it underneath, put it up in place. Okay, and we're there. Okay, so that guy's right there. Then we're going to take the top housing here. Okay, and actually this is easier easier to assemble if you do it upside down once you get this thing put together because the screws are going to come from the bottom. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put both halves together and again you've got a thick side and a thin side. Thick side goes towards the collar, goes into that groove right there, and this whole unit can spin so I'm going to put it upside down. I've got my screws and my drill screwdriver. And we're just going to screw these guys all in one at a time. Okay, I put them in. I'm not tightening them down yet. I'm just getting them started. Again, these are self-threading screws. If you over-tighten them, you will strip out the plastic and have to buy new housing. Now, when this thing is assembled and they're tightened down all the way, this housing shouldn't move at all. Okay, When you're turning your hand wheel, the housing should not move at all. Okay, Right now it's not moving and they're not tightened down all the way, so I'm feeling pretty good that it's going to be locked in after I tighten these all the way. I'm gonna, I've got it in the position I want it in. I've got my zero mark right here straight up and down with a little arrow. Okay, so I've got the alignment good. Now I'm going to come in from behind, or underneath rather, and I'm going to tighten these guys down the rest of the way. Okay, again, two fingers on the jeweler screwdriver should be all the torque you need on these screws. Okay, if you can't get to it, if the base is getting in the way, it's perfectly fine right now to move your table out, your cross slide rather out. Give yourself a little better access. Tilt it over and we're going for the other two screws. So right now your x-axis is your cross slide x-axis is set. It turns and this doesn't turn. Okay. Now if when you turn the hand wheel, if this housing was turning with it, there's two things that you can do. Okay, one of them is to take one side or the other of your housing and I would recommend the top side because it doesn't have any electrical components in it get a piece of 320 wet and dry sandpaper on a flat surface put this on the sandpaper and just sand a little bit of this surface right here off okay that way when you put them together it's going to clamp harder okay if they if they still turns after that then the best solution to that would be to put a drop, well first you have to clean off the thrust collar with wind or acetone, Windex, something uh, to get rid of any grease residue and then just put a very small drop of um, super glue in the groove so that when you put these guys together it locks in there and doesn't move anywhere. But as you can see this guy's locked in and he's not going anywhere. I'm turning my hand wheel and we're all good. All right. There is backlash adjustment in the DRO system, but if you put this together properly, you should have two thousandths or less backlash. And what you're going to do is measure that with an indicator, not just get a feel for it with your hand. From doing these, I can tell I've got two thou or less on this one. Okay, so that takes care of your X axis. Okay, for ease of production, we took the original lathe that we've been working with and we just put a Z axis column on it. Okay whether the z-axis column is mounted on your mill or your lathe mechanically it's all the same all the same function okay so on this one to change out your z-axis on your your column okay first what I want to do is move my x-axis all the way in so it's underneath the headstock so I'll get it as close as I can okay so this would be the y-axis on my mill, it's the z-axis on the lathe. Okay, this is the z-axis on the mill. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
bring my headstock down. And I've got this block right here. What I'm going to use to put this block on my on my saddle or on my cross slide rather. And I'm going to bring the headstock down on top of it, and I'm going to pinch it in place, which will then force the load of the lead screw up against the bottom here. I'm not going to force it yet, I'm just going to get it in position so I can when I change out this to DRO. And I want to have this as close to the bed as possible. If I have it out here, it puts a angular st uh, stress on the headstock. I want to be right here next, next to the bed. Okay, and I'm going to bring it down until it touches. Okay, it touches there and I'm going to back it off just a turn or two. Okay, so this is all set. Okay, again, in order to get the set screw loose on the hand wheel, I back off the lock on it so that the collar will move freely. Okay, I'm going to turn it until I put it here. I've got the hole right there. Now I'm going to hold the collar still, and I'm going to turn until right there the set screw lines up with the hole and the access hole in the collar. Okay, now I'm going to go in there and break this guy loose. Uh, right there, and about two turns, and my angle should be coming off here. Oh, I take it back. Okay, on the Z axis, you have another screw right here in the top that you also have to take off. Okay, that's going to be smaller. Okay, and that guy comes off. Okay, you have a thrust washer in here, so it's got one steel washer, I'll put the hand wheel there, okay, and then I'll have the thrust bearing and another washer, okay, and we'll just hold off on that for a second. I'm going to break our 82 degree countersink screw loose, there we go. out and our thrust collar should be able to come off right now. Okay again just like with your z-axis on the lathe it's the same mechanical setup on your column on the, on the mill. It's got a washer that goes against the shoulder on the screw that has to be there. Okay. Okay we're going to reuse the thrust washer, thrust bearing and washers out of this column on our new one. Okay, when you get your new parts for your DRO, this is the DRO thrust collar, and it's got the groove in it, okay, and your package is going to come with a shim washer, okay, this actually comes with the other two axis, and I didn't put it in in this video, but they're there, and you should use them, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put the washers back in, if you look at the washers, one side has got a slightly rounded edge to it and the other side is a little square. I would put it in so that the square side is facing the actual bearing and the rounded side is facing away. Put your bearing back in. Okay. Put your other washer back on top of that. And again with the flat side facing the thrust bearing. Okay. And then your little shim washer goes on top of that. Okay. I'm going to put this guy back together. There we go. Okay, and you may have to back out. Oh, actually, there's no screw there. Okay, so that's all set right there. I'm going to turn it until the thread hole lines up with the countersunk. And put this guy in here. Get him started. Okay, so that's. Oh, snug right there okay, and then I'm going to sock it down a little bit more okay, good and snug that guy's not going anywhere not overly tight but good and snug okay again with this guy I'm going to turn the screw clockwise in order to force the headstock down onto the block okay in order to make this easier 
I'm going to take the DRL. I'm going to see where I've got an indentation on it, on the screw, which I've got right here. And I'm going to put the set screw on that side so that I'm going with the original indentation just to get this guy loaded for me. Uh, so that's where the original set screw mark was. And go nice and tight on this guy, on the original. Okay, now I'm going to turn it down until I have pressure on my block. Okay. Once I have pressure on my block, I'm going to put a pretty fair amount of pressure on the block. That is now forcing the screw and the washer against the bottom of the thrust collar. And you can actually see the mechanical setup here better on this than you can on the lid. Okay, that's loaded. I'm going to break my set screw loose on my hand wheel. Okay. All right. Now, if I turn this 180, that's opposite where the original set screw mark was, where the indentation was on my lead screw. All right. So we've got the small 82 degree screw that goes in the center of the hand wheel. And actually, this makes it a lot easier to get rid of the mechanical backlash in this assembly right here. And what I'm going to do is tighten this guy up which in effect is the same as pushing down okay you've already got the pressure from the from this block on the lead screw up this way you tighten this set screw down in the top and that locks this down nice and tight okay now I'm going to lock this in okay and what I'm going to do if it's too much pressure then I can loosen this up a little bit and retighten this one. So actually I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go snug with it, not super tight, snug. And I'm gonna lock this guy down. Okay, now I'm gonna go counterclockwise to get the pressure off of my block. Okay, and there is virtually no backlash here. Okay. If you go too tight with this screw, then you're just going to damage the thrust bearing that's in here. So snug on that, okay, and I've got virtually no backlash in this section over here at all. Okay, okay so that part's taken care of. Again, on the DRO, you've got the thick side and the thin side. Thick side goes towards the thrust collar. Put this guy together here. That looks good. Top collar is the same way. Thick side goes towards the thrust collar. And of all the axis, this guy is probably the easiest axis to work with because there's nothing in the way. Okay, get your jeweler screwdriver or a small Phillips. And put your screws in. Alright, okay, get it lined up so that your arrow and your zero mark is straight forward. Lined up at the center of the bed. Pinch it in place and lock your screws down. Okay, I'm putting a decent amount of force on it and that's not moving at all. So we know that guy's locked in. to go. So you've got X, Y, and Z all taken care of. And that's it for the video. Thank you.